William Halsey is an artist with a lasting legacy here in the Charleston arts community. He founded the studio art program at the College of Charleston, as well as directed art classes at the Gibbs. The Charleston native broke away from the conventions of most local artists to become a pioneer of modern art in the South. His work is best described as part of the Abstract Expressionist Movement, a New York-based art movement which valued the hand or the mark of the painter above all else. The Abstract Expressionists were inspired by the surrealist idea that art should come from the unconscious mind and that the act of painting revealed something emotionally charged, personal and automatic. Halsey's abstract works certainly fit this criteria, offering a personal painterly expressionism with bold color, abstracted forms, varied materials and motifs. Unlike his predecessors who emphasized charm and sunlight in their portrayals of Charleston, Halsey reveled in the decay, colors and textures offered by the old city. Although Halsey departed from the trend of the old Charleston picturesque, he credited his hometown as a major source of inspiration. The decaying stucco buildings literally showed up in his work. Halsey drew much of his inspiration from his travels. He and his wife, fellow artist Corey McCallum, spent some time in Mexico City after college. Surrounded by weaving, pottery, and the colorful scenery of Mexico had a profound impact on Halsey's work. The two artists put together many exhibitions, mostly out of their home and studio on the corner of Chalmers and State Street, later including their artist children, David, Paige, and Louise Halsey. In order to learn how to paint like Halsey, I took a close look at his painting, Search, in the Mary Jackson Gallery. Getting up close to the artwork, I became lost in the shapes and colors, each feeling equally important, as if the entire surface has been worked to the same level. Stepping back, I became aware of the larger shapes that Halsey created using light and dark. To find out more about his process, I went to the research room on the second floor of the Gibbs. I found a quote which provided me with some guidance on how to get started. About his working method, Halsey said, Sometimes I start with an idea or image, but more often, and usually more successfully, I begin by collecting colors, textures, shapes, manipulating and playing with them until a structure starts. Then, the work begins to have a character of its own, to demand things, and I must listen. If communication goes wrong, I stop, destroy, and change. Destruction and change are vital to creation. The element of change is important to my work. It makes for surprises, and the unexpected is exciting. So, I searched for inspiration in the places I thought Halsey might. I walked my everyday stomping grounds, around the Gibbs on Meeting Street, down the cobblestone Chalmers Street where Halsey lived for a time, and all around downtown Charleston, this time with new eyes, noticing interesting color combinations, textures, and sights all around me. I took compositional interest in the strange configurations of buildings and infrastructure due to the unplanned nature of our old city. I attempted to describe that indescribable feeling of history which is present in Halsey's work and alludes to his native city. I set up down by the water with my sketchbook and some drawing materials to observe and record my findings. I collected supplies from artists and craftsmen. Instead of painting conventionally in oil on canvas, 
Halsey elected to use masonite, which provided a firm backing for his frequent reworkings of the surface and supported the many collaged elements found in his work. In order to paint like Halsey, you'll need a surface to work on, some paint and of course paintbrushes, some raw canvas and scissors. You will definitely need chalk. Uh, I also got some powdered pearl from Artists and Craftsmen, but the most important thing you need is PVC glue. So once you cut up your pieces of canvas, we'll put them together like a puzzle. So play around here, layer different shapes and pieces of canvas, and then glue it using the PVC glue. You'll want to glue over top as well. Around this point, the strings that had frayed from the canvas began to remind me of the earthquake cracks you see in buildings downtown, so I took that inspiration and ran with it. I mixed up a palette of colors inspired by the stucco pastel buildings down on Rainbow Row. I put my canvas on the ground and got to work. Halsey painted furiously on surfaces built up with gesso, sand, marble dust, found objects, and fabric. Halsey was a painter who really appreciated the physical act of painting. He worked without an orientation in mind and often laid his picture flat on the ground, walking around and working the composition from every angle. I did my best to mimic Halsey's way of working. I walked around the composition as I worked. Um, and I tried to make sure that the whole thing was moving together at once, which basically just means don't focus on any one area, try to keep moving around the piece as you work. I found I was getting the best results when I alternated between painting, grating chalk, um, and throwing marble dust over the surface, and then using a rag with some water on it and pulling away to reveal the colors underneath. Don't be scared of the colors getting muddy. As the colors mix, they create the most beautiful combinations, and this whole piece was just a process of experimentation. So just keep playing and layering and layering. The more layers, the better. Halsey's way of working really forced me to let go and taught me the value of looking at things from all sides. Because there was no right side up with this piece, I really felt I could focus on the surface, the colors, and what they expressed, what they made me feel. I felt that the process of art making was more important than the actual outcome of the piece, which in turn created a piece which reminds me that everything's a work in progress. Cities, peoples, artists, and ideas, we constantly shapeshift, adapt, and make new meaning. Artists are like scientists in many ways. They observe the world around them and record their findings. Halsey's artwork feels filled with data, some of which is scientific, some emotional. I collected inspiration and collaged it, letting the materials speak for themselves, unconfined by narrative or realism. Something I really admire about Halsey is that he stayed here in Charleston and shared his work with us, enriching our local culture when it would have been much easier to go to New York. Halsey was convinced he could be vastly more useful here in his native state than anywhere else. Halsey spent 40 years here as a teacher and mentor, creating a long-lasting impact on our artistic community. Halsey leaves behind a legacy, one that teaches us to continue to be curious about the world around us, to appreciate beauty and history, to share our knowledge with others, and to continue on bravely in our constant search for meaning.